How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary and today I'm giving you a big team battle gameplay which I had on live stream. If you guys don't know I've been streaming quite often on Twitch. Uh, link to my channel is in the description down below where I do stream about two or three maybe even four times a week sometimes. I suggest checking it out. But yeah this video is ripped from my live stream. The reason why I'm ripping it off and bringing it to you on YouTube is one is because it was an amazing amazing comeback. Um, I, it was like a 100 point comeback on uh, Strongholds for Big Team Battle, which if you don't know Strongholds for Big Team Battle, you have to get 150 points to win, and we had a 100 point comeback in this game. It was insane. I was like, I was, you know, about, I think at one point we were down like 110 to like 2. Or something ridiculously low. And I was like, man, this is going to be another blowout loss. This freaking sucks. Ugh. But in this video, I actually came, we came out on top. And I wanted to show you how, how we came out on top. And why we came out on top in this video. And I'm just, after this game, I was just super excited about how well we played. Uh, at least for the <laughs> finishing half of the game, at least. And, you know, I did actually did pretty well myself on top of that. Getting a lot of hill caps and also a lot of decent amount of kills as well. I think I finished with... Roughly a two to one kill death ratio and about like a five or four to one uh, KDA, which kill death and assist ratio. Uh, if you guys enjoy these kind of commentaries, you know, please make sure to tap that like button if you want to see more content like this. Because, you know, I judge by uh, your guys' feedback when it comes to likes and comments about how you guys like these kind of videos. This is a going to be a long commentary. You know, I was intending just to kind of upload this with just a, as a live commentary, but. Um, sadly enough, the video the music I was using on stream has some copyright strikes to it, and uh, you know I don't want any issues with that on my channel. So, figure you get, give you guys a long overdue gameplay commentary here. So, I think for the rest of this video, I'm going to do is kind of talk about uh, my thought process while playing this game. I am currently playing with uh, my buddy, um, the Guns Guy, as you can see in the chat up there, and also uh, one of the followers on Twitch, Jayhan. Uh, he's a fantastic player, and you know, it's he's him and I really do a lot when it comes to slaying and kind of keeping the enemy at bay. As you can see right now, uh, we're down 31 to zero right now. Not looking too bright on the future of capturing things. Uh, the big thing that was really holding us back in the beginning of this match was the wasp that the enemy team pretty much had control of the entire time. Uh, I've seen a lot of maps with ha that feature a wasp gen generally don't really have the most obvious weaponry when it comes to counteracting a wasp. I think it's because uh, 3 for 3 intends uh, a lot of team shooting to happen when there's a wasp in the air. But most of the times when people see a wasp in there, they try to hide away or just kind of go, ah, let someone else deal with it. Uh, but luckily I was playing with a couple friends here. So uh, right there you can see me I was shooting at the wasp. Uh, what I'm mainly trying to do is just kind of put some damage on it. And then what, once the shields burst on the wasps, I'm calling out to my friends saying, hey, you know, the wasp shields are damaged. You guys should probably come by and help me out. You know, kind of thing. Because the worst part about shooting vehicles is uh, taking down the shields. So that's, that's where the most of the bulk of the work comes in. And if you're in the opportunity where you can do that and possibly call out to your teammates and like, hey, by the way, the shields are dropped right now. If the shields drop, on, especially on a wasp, uh, you can actually take them out rather easily with some team, a good amount of team shooting. Say if someone has a sniper rifle, uh, obviously if there's like a Spartan laser or something like that on the map, well, more the better, obviously. But uh, a lot of times with uh, these uh, big team battle maps, if there's a wasp, generally there isn't anything that clearly counteracts uh, an air vehicle like there was in previous Halos. So team shooting is very key when it comes to taking out those the air vehicle vehicles because if you let a wasp run around and do its own thing, well, it's going to run around and do its own thing on you and it's not going to turn out very well. As you can see, we're currently we're down 72 to 0. Uh, luckily, I spawn right, uh, right uh, next to a ve some vehicles and I grab a ghost. Uh, I think right here is a good example of showing of how to not try to force yourself onto the like a capture point or flag or any kind. Of, this kind of goes with any kind of shooter game in general. But in Halo here, you can see how I'm working the capture. I got up to like almost like 90% right here, and I start getting rushed. And now I could, and it gets challenged. And since it's being challenged, it doesn't. Um, and, and if I jump off the uh, strong stronghold while they're on it, it completely resets, which 
really sucks. I wish they kind of went with more of the battlefield theme when it came to uh, capturing uh, bases and hills and stuff like that. But as you can see, I didn't force myself onto the hill right there. You know, it's I keeping maintaining this ghost is more important right now for me and the team as well to uh, for me to hold this ghost than it is to capture this hill because it takes it doesn't take that much time to capture a hill. But as you can see, I put on a pretty good amount of work on uh, you know defending the hill and capturing it uh, with this ghost. And if you're t and especially since uh, the way we spawn. Uh, I believe that we're right now the spawns are kind of split to where we're kind of spawning on each base Which is certainly advantageous to us right now at this moment, which I think really helped lend us to uh, uh, You know at least capturing some points right now though again. We're still down uh, The enemy team right now has what 98 points to our 10 points The struggle certainly is real and right here. I drive over to the enemy base I tr what I wanted to do initially was actually just kind of put enough damage onto it, leave the ghost like one shot, so then um, it wouldn't activate the spawn timer to a fresh ghost immediately, um, because you don't want to just blow up a ghost or some or an inactive video vehicle when it, it could be an enemy, most likely end up in the enemy's hands. Say like that ghost I just blew up. Initially, what I wanted to do is leave it just one shot, a very high damaged uh, ghost, so then it wouldn't initiate the respawn time for a new ghost to pop up. Because I think, I mean, I can't remember exactly, but it's at least like a minute and a half, two minutes, maybe even three, when it comes to having a new vehicle spawn. And that new spawn timer won't initiate unless the vehicle is completely untouched for that, you know, two, three minutes or whatever, then it will spawn a brand new vehicle. But if you destroy it, it automatically activates that timer. So if you can kind of hold off on blowing up those vehicles from spawn and let them sit there completely damaged, you would actually be a more effective to your team and more of a hindrance to the enemy team is what I'm trying to say here. I grab the Needler because, well, Needler is a well, pretty awesome gun actually in Halo 5. Very underrated for sure. Um, and when it comes to like actually brings me to my topic when it comes to grabbing the weapons in this game obviously the main theme with halo that uh when you're grabbing weapons off of the map they tend to be better than weapons that you spawn with though uh, sadly enough with the battle rifle a lot of people kind of assume that at least you know i've played a lot of people that thought the battle rifle is actually still good the battle rifle is not that good uh if you can find a dmr or a carbine or literally any other kind of mid-range weapon like that uh, you or light rifle especially a light rifle is actually very good uh, you definitely want to pick those up over a battle rifle the battle rifle is in this game is well kind of pointless uh, and the only reason why I'm really and it's you know it, it doesn't fit his role very well in the sign on sandbox and I don't see it uh, improving anytime soon before well, really honestly before the end of Halo Halo 5's lifespan going to Halo 6 so uh, whenever I spawn uh, in the mid game, uh, you can probably see right here. We'll see what happens right here when I spawn in. Uh, that my initial reaction is going to be, where am I? Get my bearings, understand where I'm at, and understand what weapons are around me. Right now, uh, there is a carbon that actually spawns just to my left along the rock wall right there, but I didn't want to give up the high ground. But uh, you can see my main focus right now is actually trying to take out this wasp because again, the enemy team has another wasp. And, but over here in this uh, orange room area, there is a sentinel beam that spawns right here, in it, which actually does a pretty decent amount of damage when it comes to the wasp. So on this map, whenever you see a wasp up in the air, like you can see right there, like I took it from just, I think, full shields down to uh, lighting the, uh, the wasp on fire, which definitely shows a lot of damage to the vehicle. So if you can grab the sentinel beam, you will definitely be helping your team quite a bit. Like it took me, what, two, three separate bursts, and boom. Down goes the wasp. Thank God. That's whenever you see that vehicle up in the air, that is your number one priority. Because if you leave a wasp unchecked up in the sky, it's all it's gonna do is just make your time playing this game just really frustrating and really honestly just not that fun. And so that's why I really focus on now here. I lucked out, picked up a scatter shot right here. Uh, I think from the rest of this match, I'll probably be really running between a uh, red and blue, um, uh, what do you call them, Strang stronghold? Red and blue tunnel is what it's called on this map. Uh, using the bottom bridge, uh, if you want to call it that, or bottom catwalk, however you want to call it for the uh, call out on this map. It's just running back and forth between the red and blue bases on this one. And I think that what really helped us bring this comeback to the against the enemy team was that they didn't really 
Uh, they focus like on one stronghold at a time, and uh, especially for the red and blue, it's actually really easy to hold down because you have a lot of cover for this direction you see I'm running. You have a lot of cover and it's a straight shot to the other uh, stronghold, which really helped me kind of go back and forth between the two. And plus, there's a active cam that spawns bottom catwalk, and there's actually a scatter shot that spawns top catwalk as well. So there's some two very uh, prominent power weapons and power ups that spawn right there, which are very important to control when it comes to doing well in this map. Now right here, you can tell I failed because I saw him throw the one uh, splinter nade and I was like, okay, I got back up. And but I can still challenge him because and I was like, well, I have a scatter shot and he's kind of close range. I can probably do well. And most of the time, when someone throws one scatter grenade or splinter grenade, they're gonna throw a second one. Uh, right here, I got really lucky because uh, Jehan, my buddy, and the party was right behind me. I thanked him greatly because, well, that was very needed. Um, but yeah, most of the times, uh, grenades in this game will spawn in pairs of two. So you, you, generally, when you walk over grenades, uh, you'll pick up you'll pick up two frags, two um, sticky or plasmas, whatever you want to call them, and two splinters. So I didn't really play that route too well. Where when you threw the first splinter grenade. I saw a challenge when really he had the opportunity to hit me with the splinter nade, and even though even after the nerf with the uh, splinter nades that happened a few months ago, um, if you're kind of still if you don't initially if you don't move right as soon as they throw that splinter nade, it could still one hit kill you. So it's very important to back off as soon as you see that splinter nade toss. You got back up, like boost backwards or do something to get out of the way because those grenades are very deadly. As you can see right here, scatter shot spawns top of this catwalk right here. And, um, I'm, and I'm trying to maintain uh, this uh, middle area because that's where a sniper rifle spawns. Sniper rifle is very important to ca carry on this, or take control of in this map uh, because obviously with the long lines of sight, this is one of the larger big team battle maps. So if you have a sniper rifle on your team, it is extremely helpful, extremely helpful. Now, the great thing about capturing these stronghold points is that you can kind of see that the stronghold actually kind of goes a little bit up the ramp when it goes to the red and blue tunnel area so ultimately the best spot to capture these uh, hills would be right at the edge like kind of right, right where I'm standing right here though uh, if a smart player is there they'll recognize that you're there and they can your grenades can easily be caught by the walls right there but most of the time at least for when I was playing right here that uh, I was getting going back and forth between a lot of teams. I was getting a lot of team support on both of these hills So I was able to kind of run back and forth. No problem again capturing the point right with the cover of the wall right there You can see on the teammate kind of just taught standing in the middle of the hill Definitely not the best spot to stand and again just running back over the blue tunnel because they're capturing that one now So we're just kind of running back and forth really luckily my team was able to capture the outside hill as well So that was super super helpful getting that triple cap because uh, these guys only need seven more points, and we need another uh, 30 right now. And so I'm going to get I'm going for another ground pound, not you know, hopefully replicate that triple kill I had earlier in the game. Though, so, obviously, sometimes it works in your favor. That time, not so much. But hey, got a kill right there. And I got a capture spree as well, so that means it's at least three hills in a row you've captured without dying. So I'm playing the objective. I'm trying. I want to win. You know, especially when you're at this point, you're like, oh my god, we actually have a chance to win this one. Um, right here, perfect example of not being uh, overextending, I would say, even though this guy's lagging like crazy, being like a quantum particle and a, a you know, going from existence to non existence, whatever nonsense. <laughs> but um, right here, I'm just trying to hold them off because I'm not trying to jump onto the hill to stop them from being on it. They can jump on it all they want because I still have the height advantage, I have the cover advantage to those guys, and so I wasn't gonna about to push it. And plus, they had a ghost down there, I wasn't about to push forward on that either. But we walked away with the win. Man, this was a long commentary. I cannot believe I was actually filled all fill all the space up with uh, you know, talking. But you know, there's a lot of strategy and a lot of thinking that comes with these games. I had seven captures with this uh, one, and we finished 25 and eight with nine assists as well. That was a solid game on my end, I would feel. And uh, it was an extraordinary game because we were able to come back from a 100-point deficit to come back and win. And I was 
like man this was a special game and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys and if you want to see any more special games make sure to follow me on Twitch uh, link is in the description down below it's the very first link in the description uh, if you want to see some more content from me make sure to tap the subscribe button uh, let me know you want to see more content like this leave a like as well it helps the video get some more notoriety if you guys want to see Help have more people that you want to know in this kind of game, or at least to go like, wow, man, they barely won that game. That was crazy. Well, you can share it around, and I greatly appreciate that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.